This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. I'm going to lead us through a guided tour of Tiger City. Of course, James, Stephen, and Clyde introduced us earlier on the outside, and this is what we see here. Here's a little Nokia store. Underneath there, underground, is a nightclub that's a little bit busy on the weekends, a small little place. Otherwise, we can see the big courtyard here where they have activities that bump right up against the main road, a Cold Stone ice cream store, and a Starbucks, which have some tables out into the common area. Well, as we enter the Tiger City on the main entrance, which is in the movie section where most people do go in, you can see that the aisleway is taken up by these islands. And these islands channel people to two sides. The aisle wasn't really huge to start with. These islands make it really small. And this channels people in together, which really adds to that zoo kind of feeling. We don't go in too far before we see some underwear and bra stores. Here's something unusual, though, male underwear, which we don't find very much. Tons and tons of female bras and underwear, though. On the first floor, we do have some of our high-end, uh, high-margin products, such as shoes and purses and these kinds of items, although there's not much in the way of perfume or those things, which are mostly taken over by the department stores, which are just a few blocks away from this retailing, in this retailing district. I think you can see right here we have some young people here. This is really a kind of tween shopping area. Uh, young couples come. Sometimes you'll have families come for movies, but for the shopping it's mostly these lower end tweens. Here's a Bassini store and of uh, interest here is this island they've pushed out here, these large containers of product on deep discount. And this is what I call the inside out retailing effect, which Chinese uh, so common in Chinese cultural settings, you allow consumers to dig through the piles, to touch it, to uh, dig down into it, uh, mess it all up and make a big mess, and it grabs attention. This is right in the entrance of the store. Usually stores even go further, push it out into the walkway, as we see here. And this is inside the shopping center, inside the mall. In, in Taiwan, in southern China, uh, you can see these go right out into the actual sidewalks outside, sometimes even into the streets. Again, there is no shortage of underwear. This began about 10 years ago. In the last five years, it's really picked up. I think there's a lot of hedonistic uh, consumption involved here, especially with a, a lot of the higher ends. Here we have bras being put out into the outside of the store, this inside-out effect again, with some discount, although these are not very cheap prices, but they push them out there to indicate they're on sale. Again, allowing consumers to touch the product, dig through the product, and check it out in comparison shop in detail. Now inside this uh, Tiger City on the first floor, I think it was originally planned to be a kind of upscale uh, shopping center in the in tradition of Western shopping centers. Here we have some of our little bit higher end boutique kind of stores and of interest here is the transposition of the words F-C-U-K instead of F-U-C-K and it, what's interesting is that you know that's, we read about that in marketing books it can get your attention that transposition and here we see it in action but in Taiwan you know you can if you were to say that word out loud I think it wasn't very long ago I saw in the news a foreigner was actually sued for saying the word F-U-C-K just saying it and they went to court and they were found guilty of saying it um, in a fairly conservative society for this to happen and be able to get away with it that way is, is very interesting the way those tensions work. As we move a little bit deeper into this side of the mall we have some high-end stores you can see which are fairly empty and have their uh, product uh, designed and, and displayed in a very upscale kind of way, very inside-in retailing in the Western t tradition. If you'd walked in here and you didn't know you were in Taiwan, you might assume you're in the U U.S. or the U.K. or uh, South Africa, where malls all practice very, very similar uh, service scape design. We have some jewelry and some other items that are in this high-end section. Now, this section has an entrance that you can actually get into 
without going through the other lower end. And I don't know if that was designed on purpose. I suspect it developed a little bit later as the mall found its target market segment to not really be the high-end people, not really be the high-end people, but to be these uh, tweens that have much less money. Here are a couple of them here shopping, looking at watches. Very common to be going out on dates or pseudo dates uh, with groups of friends from high school. All of my children have been here with their high school friends. That might be a once in a semester special trip or maybe at most once a month. And always I hear stories about someone in the group was able to buy this or buy that. And this is a real conspicuous kind of consumption. Here, of course, the conspicuous consumption comes out even more clear in these high-end stores. You're not going to get many of your tweens coming in here. This may be more of your people from the 7th district, which is an upside of town, which is where the mall is located. And here is the entrance that leads right into this higher end section. And then right across there are the coffee and ice cream shops. The Starbucks, you know, uses a world standard pricing system, which is extremely depressing if you like Starbucks because you're going to end up paying at least double uh, what local prices are. But they're still priced a little bit under Japanese coffee stores, so uh, take that to mean whatever you think. Here's Cold Stone. I'm not familiar with this in the United States. My students tell me it is from the U.S., and we get a shot of the prices here. Double to triple what local ice cream prices are. Um, maybe it's good, I don't know. But I do know that when I've heard people talk about being here, they always talk about they went out with their friends, and inside here we can see there's a couple that are actually a male-female tween, maybe on a date. And I think groups of people come here to hang out and they indulge or splurge in the very similar vein as we talked about in the McDonald's show where groups of young people go out to McDonald's. They could not afford it to do that often, but they do it enough. It has that special kind of feeling, that hedonic consumption with your friends. And if you are someone who has money, who can spend money, then you can really undergo, uh, undertake some conspicuous consumption in this kind of context and maybe even pay for your friend's ice cream. I need to get somebody like that to be my friend. So as we move further in, especially up to the second floor, we begin to see the inside out really taking over. Here we are on the second floor with purses. Uh, some of these may be real or not real. I'm not an expert at telling, but they're all put out into these big uh, boxes stuck right onto the sidewalk. Uh, vats of them that you can dig through and we just saw the discounting down to 50% again we cannot escape almost every other uh, store seems to be bras and here we can see compared to the prices we just saw downstairs at least 10% 10 to 20% even lower based on those prices there and then they do a lot of this packaging where buy one get one buy two get one discounted something like this it's very very popular in uh, this context here we have get your underwear, get your bra, and combine things together, get a special price. Now there is a, another interesting store that I saw, Working House. This is, this is an import also, and it kind of has that Ikea feeling to it, that same kind of idea, only it's just much more basic, kind of a new age atmosphere. All these little trinkets you can get for your house. And as you go in, uh, they still very much have the Chinese approach to it. That was a Mai Songi, buy one, get one free sale right up front. And as you go in, you can kind of get the feeling there's some uh, El Cheapo furniture there, kind of pseudo furniture stuff, some glasses and things to put around the house. So I was very interested who would be shopping in a place like this. And again, I did see a, a couples, some couples that were together, not so young, maybe mid-20s. And maybe they're looking for some things to go in their house or their future house. Given prices of housing in Asia, it's very rare that a young couple can have their own home. Although it's always possible. These guys may be just dating. Here they come here. They're going to come over and look at the mixing straws. Glass mixing uh, thingies. And they talk about it and discuss it for a while. And they look around. So there's a lot of enjoyment, I think, going on here. Uh, couples come out, they shop around, they get involved in it. It has a kind of feeling of something imported, something higher class from another culture they bring in. And they really like and talk about it. But when they walk out, they end up buying just one or two small things. And I think they end up being decorations or trinkets in their home. 
much as the way an American might buy something that looks kind of Italian or Spanish or Asian and put it in their home. So this kind of has that flavor. As you go deeper into the store, however, things were more on discount and it began to look more like a Taiwan or Japanese bookstore and that it had a lot of accessories that go into your room where you study. And so that's a real smart move because, of course, young people are spend all their time in their room studying and they like to buy little trinkets to jazz it up or brighten it up. And so I saw groups of males. There was about five or six males all together. They looked, high school, looked like high school students. I saw another group of maybe six, five or six females, and they were all high school students. And they go in, these groups of the same gender go in with their buddies and joke around and play around. And they were enjoying it, and I think that's part of the store's appeal. I'm not sure what their volume sales are going to be like given this context, however. Definitely things were more expensive than you could get. You would get the almost exact same things in the night market, way cheaper. Or we could get almost the exact same things in Xiaobei Baihuo, which is a large chain of discounters here that really follow a more local approach. But in those places, you won't get this atmosphere. And as we can see here, these girls are really having fun, playing around with the things they see on the shelf, these things that they you know, would maybe like to buy. And if they can, they can buy. And they can show off to their friends and have that kind of hedonistic consumption. They can have that conspicuous consumption. But... If not, they can just play around and have some fun with it. Here we see some new products, always emphasizing the new products that enter the market. And they look like normal clocks. I mean, they didn't look that new. Now, down a couple of stores, we see another interesting store. And this, again, is a very Western import format. This is a sports store, but it kind of has a theme. And I think the theme is military, because we see a kind of uh, mine there, an ocean mine. There was a missile with an American flag out front. And as we go in, there's lots of brush metal uh, steel cases with lots of glass they look like they're all in some kind of secure um, headquarters or something and inside are iPods and sunglasses sunglasses with headphones and microphones and all this kind of high-end stuff very expensive compared to what you can get the same thing somewhere else here I think I was looking at some sunglasses and they were going for four to six thousand NT dollars which would be Oh, 100 to two, 120 to 200 do US dollars. I had bought a pair of sunglasses that didn't look that very different in the Fengjia night market but just a week before for 200 NT, which would be around 7 to 8 dollars US dollars. So it's a huge gap here. Obviously, if you're coming here, you're going to be doing some conspicuous consumption with your friends to show off that you can do that. You can afford that. You can buy that. A very inside-in retailing setting where things are not only inside the store, not only in the middle of the store, but they're also inside cabinets and glass, which I thought was very uh, unusual to see this kind of thing in Taiwan. We have a little sign of the cash register that's very normal in Taiwan, which reminds people the little logo of Tiger City, the Tiger, don't forget to get a receipt. And if you don't get a receipt, here's a phone call, a number you can call management because you want to report people because receipts equal taxes and people try to avoid their taxes. Imagine that. So we can walk around the store. There was a sales lady there. She did not approach me once, which I did feel was unusual because it is a kind of Western, very Western-oriented store. They probably get some Westerners in there, but she must have been shy and was afraid to talk English to me. Here we have another underwear store right out in the middle, an island that takes up almost the whole aisle way. And it's called Lolita. I don't know if they did that on purpose. It must be on purpose. I don't know if they get it. Here's another brand name example in Asia where the names are taken from English, but the context is not completely appreciated. So Lolita underwear. I didn't go shopping there, by the way. And so there are some uh, shoe stores. Shoe stores always in Taiwan follow this very similar format. I've seen this a lot in Hong Kong and China, too with your island pushing out with your deep sale items. Down in the basement they have some restaurants and near those restaurants they have children's games. It's a gaming center but near the restaurants are actually games for children. And here we have the Japanese drum set which is very popular and I watched this guy play for a while. He actually looks like he could get outside and do some exercise would be more helpful than playing drums all day but anyway. They had a whole section of video games for young girls, which is really interesting. Also, again, imported from Japan. And these young girls, you 
think they're at a boarding school. You have to push some buttons, make them do some actions, and they slowly become successful and rock stars or something like that. It's very interesting. As we go into the regular game section, of course, this is mostly first, per first person shoot 'em up kind of games, very violent. We just saw a couple there, a, a tween couple, teenagers out on a pseudo date. And as we walk around, we get another whole nether section. And here I am, I, my daughter's leading me, showing me around the photo booth like. area, which is a huge like. industry in Japan and is exported to other countries. And here in Taiwan, people love it. What is it? You go in the photo booth, get your photo taken, basically, and then when a photo comes out, it becomes a sticker. But you can do many special effects to it, like add mustaches to somebody's face, add colors, move backgrounds around. And these booths are very, very intricate. Here we see on the outside, you get these directions, how to even enter the booth, put your money in and begin. Once you get into the booth, they have these large lighting domes that light you up. They have uh, a video camera. They give you some previews on an LCD screen, what your picture's going to look like. And behind you, even in some, some of them, up top they have backgrounds that slide down depending on what your selection is. You could actually have different backgrounds slide up and down behind you. All completely automated, no people involved. 50 NT here just to begin the process. You can see our directions uh, for the devices. Safety instructions are all in Japanese. These are completely imported machines. And the users go in there, put the money in. Usually, I think uh, that was 50. It was, a, it was for a single picture, I believe. If you want to get the real process done with your friends, then it's around 250 to 300. And so lots of students come here, high school students, junior high school students, and have fun with their buddies, with their friends, with their group. And you just saw there, there was a sign for membership card. For $100, you can become a member and then get a discount on the stickers, photos, and other things they have there. So I think groups of young people come here. They spend that money. They get their stickers. Again, uh, my daughters have all been here. I don't know if my son was ever here. But they've all done this kind of thing. And my daughter was telling me while we, she was showing me around. You know, She came here with her friends, and one of them contributed more money to the pool to buy it. And so everybody knows she's got money. So this is the real conspicuous consumption. Again, tweens doing this. They're all out there having fun. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior.